those of you that don't live in Montana probably don't know that Montana is one of the most seismically active states in the country. It ranks fourth in the country with about seven to ten earthquakes that are reported each year. But it seems like it's been growing. The largest earthquake in the state history occurred over 60 years ago. And the destruction it caused can be seen today. Montana probably is, isn't the first state you think of when you think of earthquakes. But according to the USGS, it's one of the most seismically active states in America. In 2023, Livingston, Montana experienced its largest earthquake in over a decade. It measured a magnitude 4.1 on the Richter scale. Even though earthquakes are common there in Montana, they usually don't cause a lot of damage. However, the largest earthquake in the state history was at Hedgen Lake, and that was on August 17, 1959. Let's go to that location. And that's actually closer uh, to the hot spot right there, Hedgen Lake. Yeah, so it's, it's south of where today's earthquake occurred. Yeah, that was a magnitude 7.2, possibly a 7.3 earthquake. It happened at night when most people were sleeping at 11.37 p.m. And as many as 28 people died. The entire side of the mountain collapsed, creating what they now call Earthquake Lake. Yeah, a million tons of rock and mud and debris uh, filled the canyon uh, below, blocking the Madison River and creating Earthquake Lake. Yeah, people were sleeping in their tents when the rock slide occurred and, yeah, killed them instantly. The boulders were as big as some of some houses, I guess. Did you feel the uh, magnitude 3.1 earthquake there in Belgrade, Montana? It wasn't far from the Chalice Fault Zone, which is drawn out in red here. And then also we have the Immigrant Fault. So it's right between two different faults. I'd like to know if you felt it. How long did it last? It was early in the morning, 7.42 a.m. And it is Saturday, June 1st, 2024. So maybe people were sleeping in. I did a video earlier today and I got my days mixed up. I was thinking it was Friday. Well, when you're retired, it's just another day. Um, yeah, we're often, at my age, glad to even wake up, right? <laughs> Only nine people said they felt this earthquake, and I thought that was odd. I mean, look at the population and the location where USGS said, you know, it occurred. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News, and welcome. I hope everyone's going to enjoy their weekend. Yeah, this earthquake was only about seven miles in depth. This here is the seismic signature of that earthquake. Um, USGS said it was um, a 3.1. Let me bring this down so you can see this. If I can get my mouse to move. There we go. Um, I come up with a magnitude 3.32. Not much of a difference, but it is higher than what USGS said. And this comes from the borehole at the Norris Geyser Basin, like I said, and it looks like fault movement. I haven't done a report about the Yellowstone and its activity in a while, um, but I do keep an eye on it. You know I do. You can see here all the dead trees. Uh, these trees were killed by the gases coming up from the ground, um, being killed from the roots up um, they grew up during what's called the quiet period. And then we got more dead trees back over here. Can you see that? Nope, oh, they moved the camera. It's jumping around there looking at that one hot pole. Yeah, it looks like uh, we got some discoloration from um, the fungi that's growing in these heated poles. Yeah. So here we got the spectrogram. Yeah, it rattled for quite a while. I'd like to know what you guys thought about this. How long did it last? Here on the borehole for the Norris Geyser Basin, we have another earthquake. 
Um, I haven't had a chance to check to see if it's been reported. Let me extract that. Yeah, it looks like um, a slow moving tremor, fault movement. 448 universal time. Here I was going to look at the chart and I see that they had um, a magnitude 3.1 earthquake there. Um, Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake near Salt Lake City. Um, about the same depth, 6.8 kilometers. Maybe a little bit shallower. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. I want to see what we got for that earthquake that is marked in red, which means the computer picked it up, and it's not listed. I have it um, set for all earthquakes in the last 24 hours. So that would be a magnitude 1.48. Let me bring it down so you can see it at the bottom. Um, MD 1.48. Yeah, and like I said, it's in red. All right, we'll close that out. Now, being a borehole, it only picks up what goes on under the ground. And I don't know if you can see all the popping that has been going on. If I can get it on the right line. See that? Let me go to the pull this up and go to the seismic signature. Yeah, there's been a lot of popping. Uh, let's see right there. I mean, there's there's hundreds of them. It's doing that because the ground is under so much strain from uplift, and yeah, it can't bend. It's not flexible, so it's popping. When I pulled the files, we got. Two more right here, it looks like. One there. And right there. Yeah, and you can see we got harmonic tremors. Um, this is another indication that the volcano is recharging for another eruption, and who knows when. So, okay. Um, Norris Geyser Basin. That's the borehole in the center. On the far left... That is the monitor for Yellowstone Lake. Boy, look at that. And then Denny Creek. I've talked and talked and talked about Denny Creek. That's been showing. Yeah, you know, look at the line of melt. Um, the seismic signet. Oh, I'm trying to. Okay, right there. See that? Yeah. Toilino, the spring. And that's been going on since August. And I feared within 19 months we're going to have some kind of activity. A large earthquake, possibly. Look at that. Um, because this is often seen for volcanoes prior to either an eruption or a large earthquake to release the pressure. Yeah, I hope it's not just clearing its throat. Look at that. Yeah, Torlinos. You know, I do want to apologize for not covering Yellowstone as much as I need to, giving you guys reports. But it's just ongoing activity. I'm prepared. I'm probably, oh, 500 miles, maybe a little bit farther as the bird flies from Yellowstone. I am prepared. I have, you know, the food, the water, the medical supply. Um... I don't know if I would evacuate. It would probably depend on the situation. Going south where it's warmer. The size of the eruption. Um, if it's a major eruption. Yeah. It would probably put the earth into an ice age. Um, but. Yeah. I don't know. If I would evacuate going south or not. But I do have enough supplies. Um, because it would short out the wa the uh, the power across the country um, when the ash lands on the power lines and the different connections. Um, you'd have arcing, sparking, and we'll, and if we lose power for any type of situation for long term, there isn't going to be any transportation of food or other goods. There's not going to be any factories to make those products because yeah um yeah they won't be running they need power 
Um, no dispatch for police or ambulance um, because they need power. I'm going to go back to the spectrogram. There's those two earthquakes. Yeah, you can see the different lines of melt. But anyways, I figured maybe within night. Oop, I'm going to make that bigger. 19 months and my clock that I'm watching started in August of last year. This is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. It's um, situated by the fishing bridge. Here we have Yellowstone Lake. Okay, and I got all kinds of notes on here. But let me bring it out. Okay, this is Yellowstone Lake. This is the location for that borehole. It's a very deep well under the ground. Um, so no outside noise or anything like that. Um, it's going to pick up. It's only going to pick up what happens under the ground. I don't care how many stampeding buffalo um, you'll have going across or lightning or ATVs or snowmobiles or whatever, whatever the season might be. Um, it's not going to pick it up. Here's an example of one of the boreholes. This is the Madison River area. Um, this one is 687 feet deep for the strain meter. Um, and then the um, monitor for the earthquakes is 661 feet deep. So a football field is, what, 360 feet? So the depth for the monitor that picks up the earthquakes is almost two football fields i don't know would you feel a whole herd maybe a couple hundred head of bison running through there would you feel that two football fields away well maybe but we know they don't have that going on there at yellowstone so it's definitely not going to pick up lightning it's not going to pick up you know the cars and trucks and speed bumps and things like that that's the whole purpose of deep, digging such a deep well. Interestingly, on this side of the lake, when they were um, looking for areas to put in boreholes, um, it was hard because of the ground temperature increasing so dramatically in such shallow locations. Yeah. So this is what the monitor is currently showing. Let me go to the seismic signature. Yeah, slow moving tremors. Yeah. This is the files that wrote, went off the line. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it shows you the heat here. Yeah, it's some hot water down there. So we got a little earthquake here. I think that's the one I just covered at 448 Universal. Um, another one there, too. Quick little popping right there. Um, oh, I wanted to close this so I can look at the other one some more. See, yeah, harmonic tremors, yeah. And this is fault movement. But anyways, yeah, just because I haven't done a video, I'm sorry about what's going on there. Doesn't mean I'm not watching. I am watching. Um, anytime something major happens, like today, the um, earthquake there along the Chalice um, Idaho fault line. There we go. Oh, I wish I could make that bigger. I'm tired. I just haven't been getting enough sleep lately because, um, you know, with my move. So I'm, I'm kind of being a bumbling idiot right now. I need a nap. Is it okay by you guys if I take a nap today? Yeah, just take one afternoon off of putting boxes away. Yeah. I wonder if the people that are walking there actually realize the ramification that they are walking in the center of an active volcano. Do they even think about it? Um... No one can predict when a volcano is going to erupt. They hope they'll have all kinds of earthquakes and um, gas readings and things like that that might indicate it. Um, I don't know how well they are monitoring the gas readings. Can't even get access to them, at least us, the general public. 
but how often do they take the gas readings? Yeah, they're jumping around, aren't they? Anyways, that's all I have for you right now. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you sharing my videos. Um, yeah, comment about that earthquake. Did you feel it? Let me know the details. I enjoy reading it, and so do other people. Thank you again. Please stay safe. God bless, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.